Did you know that AI could help you generate laser engraved images in just minutes? Join us and we'll show you why we're putting them on a pair of shoes. What is up? Welcome back. I do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. And this week, I am super excited. We get to use some AI image generation to create laser engraved designs to throw on some shoes. We were asked to submit a shoe design for a charity auction. They have provided the shoe. This will be our ultimate engraved shoe. And we were asked to create some sort of artwork on this shoe and then submit it for auction. Now, they only gave us like a week to do this thing in. Now. Yes. I mean, yes. I really would want to come up with some really cool images of like Richmond and things around Richmond, landmarks. Yes, we've chosen to do different images around Richmond as landmarks because we felt like that would resonate well, with many people. Everybody loves their hometown. Yeah. So why not design the shoe and give us some hometown spirit. Now we really talked about whether we wanted to paint a design on there. Again, I'm the crafty one, not the artistic one. And Garrett and I really talked about whether we should paint something really cool, but we're laser engravers and that's what we're doing on our day to day. And we thought we've never seen this done before. We thought it would be really cool to try and create an image and laser engrave it on a shoe. I figured it's suede. It's a lot like leather. So we'll just treat it like leather. And we talked about how we were coming up with the images. I know I went and searched all kinds of Richmond artwork and artists around Richmond that have done landmark designs. But Garrett was like, wait. Wait, we I, don't have time to do all this and I did. make I was, our own I version of these I spent a lot of, of time designs. looking, yes. So let's use AI to help us create these images. It's a one-time use thing. Let's uh, use AI to create these one-time personalized shoes. Step one, we're gonna make our design. We're gonna move over to ChatGPT and we're gonna have ChatGPT help us generate an image with Richmond landmarks. Now we've already tested this out and we've seen some crazy things. <laughs> so we can't wait to jump into ChatGPT and show you what we've come up with. Here we are in ChatGPT. We started out with just giving some basic background information on what it is that we're trying to do. We want to create a laser engraved image on some women's shoes. We live in Richmond, Virginia, and we want the design to have that theme. And can you help me create an AI image generator prompt? So we're going to have ChatGPT create the prompt that ChatGPT will use to create the image. So it started out with a basic prompt, gave us some good information with some information about our city. It actually threw in things like the dogwood, the magnolia, the dogwood is our state flower uh, and tree. So uh, it gave us a lot of good information about the city already. So we fed that back into ChatGPT with the prompt. And then it gave us uh, some information about what the image should look like, but that's not exactly what we want. We wanted the actual image. So we tried again, create a detailed image of a laser engraved pattern for women's shoes inspired by the city. You can see all the things that we have here and you can pause this to read it in detail, but it really focused on the shoes this time and gave us a really nice pattern on some shoes, but that is not what we want. And those so. are two different shoes. <laughs> Like, they're not even the same shoe. Well, they're just two different pattern shoes. They're... No, they're two different loafers. Look at the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we fed it back in, and this time we took shoes out. All right, you're, you're focused on the shoes. Let's get rid of those. And we, the prompt does say have a floral motif, but again, it's really focusing on the floral motif. I mean, that's not and... a bad looking image. It's not too bad. I mean, these are our landmarks. The capital is not over here by the river. So <laughs> it really just jammed it in there because it said state capital. Uh, so it didn't, it doesn't exactly work. And I'm not sure this is what we wanted to engrave on the shoes. It's, it's not exactly what we were thinking of. So we had to tweak it again. We came back in, asked for another version this time. Um, I don't remember what was our difference between oh, this these time two. we took out like the oh yeah magnolia the we magnolia took out the flowers and the in this one woods, yeah but it really remembered that it, it liked that part of it <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of kept it and it gave us some more 
Uh, again, it's trying. I mean, this would make a nice coin. It, this would make a nice coin, yeah. But this isn't large enough. We needed a larger image, a wider image to put on the side of a shoe. So this time we tried again and let's see what our difference was between these two. Um, we took out some of the, the additional detail of some of the elements that it wants uh, or that we wanted it to produce, but we did keep in the skyline, the state capitol. We added Belle Isle Bridge. We, uh, I think, was James River in there before? Yeah, James was, River, yeah. but I think we added Belle Isle Bridge because that's a big landmark over the river, um, which didn't even include. there. It, it, I guess this is kind of eh. uh, an example of the bridge. It's a bridge. Yeah, over the river. So it, it really tried. But this and this is the Virginia Enon Bridge, and that's it's just a thing there. And then there's a ship on the land over there. They just put the ship in a field. Where, oh, right here. Yeah. Well, it's, it's in a it's in a alcove. Oh, Maybe it's, it's in an a alcove. Lake. It's a pirate ship. <laughs> so you know, you sometimes you just have to keep trying. You have to keep tweak, tweaking it. So this time we put it back in, but we gave it additional landmarks. So we left the state capitol. We added Agecroft Hall. Left the Belle Isle Bridge. We added Hollywood Cemetery, St. John's Church. These are all big landmarks here in the city of Richmond. So it started working on it. It did start adding some of those things. It's got the church. This, it's, that it, is the bridge. Yep. That is a better representation of the Belle Isle Bridge. This says Hollywood Cemetery, but that's not the cemetery. And it threw in the word Agecroft, but that's not <laughs> Agecroft Hall. It's trying. And uh, yeah, it's trying. But you're, you got the capital, and it really. We didn't ask for the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond, but that's what that building is, and it's been in every image, so it really knows that the skyline has the Federal Reserve Bank on there. This time we added wide format image, so we needed more area, more images, a wider, larger image that we could put on the side of that shoe, so we added wide format in there, but kept in the elements that we had in the last one, and no. It, it did make it wide format, but it's now what is happening with these yeah. bridges? It's trying. And this, I think, is part of Hollywood Cemetery. So, again, it's trying to come up with what we want. And, again, we just fed it back in this time. It didn't prompt, so we did it one more time. And this time it gave us this nice view, which I mean, isn't bad. That would bad. be a nice picture. I would hang that on my wall, but I can't use it for the shoe. <laughs> and it really isn't the wide format we were looking for. I don't, it really added some nice design on the outsides. So again, it's not what we want. So this time we said create a wide format black and white graffiti mural. So this was Garrett's idea, and I'm not sure what why you went with graffiti. Cause well, I see that it kept trying to make it look old-timey. Uh -huh. Right, it kept giving it that um, historical, yeah, and that, that, se that sepia look. And I, I was looking for something more modern, so I thought, let's try graffiti. I want to mash it all together, but I'd like it to be like a bold. So, this one is pretty good. I mean, this one isn't bad, it's got all the elements, it is in there. Richmonia. So <laughs> we might have to fix that, but Richmond was good up here. It is. It has the Belle Isle Bridge. This is a great depiction of the bridge. Mm -hmm. Still has that Federal Reserve Bank. It knew that was part of the skyline. The Capitol is in the middle. This is part of that Agecroft Hall. Agecroft Hall or the Hollywood Cemetery. It could oh, be trying could to bring either, it. Well, yeah. I know this is part yeah, of Hollywood, Hollywood Cemetery. Cemetery. So it's well, that's bringing in Hollywood a lot Cemetery. of. Yeah, and it does say Hollywood Symmetry. So not bad. This one, I, we were feeling good at this point. So I think, again, we just fed this back in with the black and white graffiti, and it gave us this version, which got real busy yeah. real fast. Too and many a, buildings. And some random car. Was that a Suburban? Yeah. <laughs> the virginia virginia suburban i don't know what's happening there and then um the ferris wheel we were like where did it get a ferris wheel we don't even have a ferris, no ferris wheel, wheel in the city of richmond so i'm not sure why it even threw that in but it and then the the airplanes are cracking me the up <laughs> these these stacks i don't know what these are what these are aren't those? part of our skyline so we were like great good child one more let's give it again i just fed the thing right back in and it gave two more this time it gave two more and they're getting it's getting worse <laughs> it's further away this one and this one that's, that's horrible they're graffiti. trying i see the elements it does it is right with the elements but it's not the image that we're looking for 
So we tried again and this one isn't too bad. Um, but I liked the other one better. I think there we could use this one. There might have been a few tweaks to this one that we would make, but this one isn't too bad. It's not right? too bad. It just doesn't look pretty. And I didn't like the words being in the middle of the water there. Um, so, you know, one more time. We'll just keep going. Let's no, see, I like see what this else. one. This one looks. This one looks nice. I like it. Except, what's up with the taxi in the in the river? Right there's <laughs> yep right smack in the middle of the river. It's drying, and then I don't know why the crane is here. <laughs> what image? So there's always construction going on. So maybe it found that in something. I don't know where it found that. And then again with the Ferris wheel. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand why it keeps throwing this Ferris wheel in. They're really trying. I'm just going to keep going. We tried again. and I, then, I really like this one. This one had too much of the squirrely yeah, stuff. Yeah, too much squirrelies. And, and the then the Ferris wheel Ferris again. Wheel. And we were like, okay, let's just, let's just keep going. Now it put the Ferris wheel front and center. <laughs> it's like, you guys it, don't want the Ferris wheel? Yeah. Or you really love the Ferris wheel? And every time we said cemetery, it's really trying to throw some skulls in there because... It, it you're like if you want a cemetery i know what you're I'm looking for you a cemetery. i know what you're looking for yeah <laughs> the, woof. this one's too busy this too one's busy Vichmond. this one's yeah this one was vitchmond and then here we're this is where we kind of were like all right it's just getting worse uh again it's got the ferris wheel i don't know why it keeps throwing that in we now have the statue of liberty <laughs> which doesn't belong and the here. biplane got bigger Right, and then we're not North Carolina. Well, what's up with the smokestacks and skulls? That's oh, we just... did do another one. I thought that was the end. This one's the last one. This one's the last one, and this one was too busy. The bridge is too prominent. This is not even our bridge. Actually, you're further away from the that Virginia Enon like Bridge. It the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, I and think there's a this... subway. Yeah, we I... don't have a subway system and it's here. A one, two, three. And a three Ferris <laughs> wheels. So we went back. We decided. That, you know what, when it created the first um, wide format image was the best one. Here it is. Here this it one. is. Yes, yeah, so we can work with this one. Yep. But we are going to do a few tweaks to it. We are going to have to fix the word Richmond. I'm going to flip the flag and fix the Hollywood Cemetery. Hollywood Cemetery. So we're just going to download it by clicking this download button right here in the top right of the image. We've imported our image here in Photoshop and we're going to remove these misspelled words here. So we're going to select our paintbrush tool, zoom in, and we're going to select it again. We're going to pick up our background color and what we're really going to do is paint over these words. So I'm just going to take the white and essentially paint over all of the misspelled words. I don't know what font this is. I could pick another font, which we will here in a minute for the Richmond, but it's easier just to remove them first. So again, grab the background color, select one end, shift, select the other end, and I'm able to erase all of Richmonia. Richmonia. And then let's clean up Hollywood Symmetry. <laughs> uh, we're gonna click the background colors black. We we'll select one end, shift, select the other and it fills it in for us. So now that's all painted black. We're gonna pick up our text tool and let's change the font here. Um, change the word to Richmond and we'll change the font here in just a second. Let me clean this up. And that one's a little, little thick, so we're gonna pick a different font. It's classy, I like it. Yeah, that looks good. Then we're gonna come over here to the little sign. Uh, we grabbed RVA from the web. It's like uh, a bumper sticker everybody has around here. So we're just gonna fill it in with RVA. Pretty simple. And next we're gonna go ahead and remove the background. So we're going to pick up our little magic wand tool, select the background, and then we're going to delete the background. And that way, only the engraved, the black areas will stay. There will be no actual background on this. That way you can see through it and actually see where you're placing it on the shoe and not trying to guess through the opaque image. And we're going to export this as a PNG file. 
Garrett's our little Photoshop whiz, so he can do this much more efficiently than I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it from here. We took a couple of pictures of the shoes. We took the left side, right side, and the toes. I'm just gonna right click, open with Photoshop, now, once it's imported, all I have to do is click this down here, remove background. It did all the work for me. Now I just need to go ahead and turn this thing counterclockwise 90 degrees. From here, I'm going to go over to my layers and I'm going to flatten this image. Right click and flatten image. Now I'm going to go off and get the image that Kimberly just prepared for us. So I'm going to grab that and just drag it right onto my canvas right here right over top of my shoe. Now let's resize this to get a good chunk of the image on the shoe. I want it to capture a lot of the image on the side of the shoe, but I don't want things to get too big. I want to keep some detail. Being able to see through this image it really comes in handy. I can really see what falls on the shoe. Once I'm done, I'm going to click done. Now I'm going to make a copy of this layer just in case anything goes wrong. I don't want to go back a bunch of times. I'll just be able to unhide this layer and start again. So I'm going to unlock the shoe layer. I'm going to grab my... I'm going to grab the magic wand tool and I'm going to select the white background on the shoe layer. So let's make sure the shoe layer is selected. I'm going to use my magic wand tool. Boom. Now I want to expand this a little bit. So I'm going to invert. I'm going to select invert. I'm going to go down to modify and expand. I'm going to expand by about five pixels. All right, this will give me some buffer area. Now let's go back to invert. So the white area is selected again. Now let's make this. Now let's make the image layer active so I can delete the parts of the image that I don't need. Now, if I just hit delete, it'll tell me that I can't do it. If I go get my erase tool and I try to do it, it'll tell me I can't do it, but I can go ahead and convert it out of a smart object. So we'll say, okay, now I can delete it. Now I can erase it and delete it. Once it's deleted, I'll go ahead and deselect everything, shrink my erase tool, and just clean up this image just a little bit. I don't need to burn up the rubber. All right, looks good. So let's get rid of the shoe image. We'll crop this down so that my image when I import it isn't huge. It's a reasonable size. Now this is still a big shoe. So let's go ahead and shrink this. We'll go shrink this to about eight inches. Yep, let's shrink this to eight inches. And now let's go ahead and export this as a PNG. Export and we'll name this right side of the shoe. That was pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the heel on this side, the toe, the other side of this shoe, and the other side of this heel. I'm going to do that all in fast forward so that you don't have to sit through it. But if you enjoy this type of content, join us over on Patreon where we have classes like this each month. Step two, time for testing. We have a stunt shoe because we only have one pair of shoes for the charity event. One shot. And we can't mess those up. So we have a stunt shoe and we're gonna name this shoe Colt Seavers. <laughs> Our stunt shoe. We're gonna use the Eon Nova 14. It has an onboard camera system. We connected that a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, I guess, when we did some hat videos. We did some engraving on some hats and the camera allowed for perfect placement. So we think that's gonna be a good option to lay the shoe out and be able to lay the image on the shoe and see exactly where it should be right from the overhead camera. So we're pretty excited about that. We are gonna be put the four inch lens in this so that it has enough depth to actually get the angles as it starts to engrave. Not all the way around, but as these angles change around here, like this is pretty flat, but as it starts to go around here, that four inch lens will allow a little longer focal height so that it'll go around the edges and the curves just a little bit. It's, it's, it'll do it. I it'll think do it'll it. do it. It'll do it. And we're gonna use a sandbag to try to put this shoe exactly where we want it and keep it level to try to get most of the area in one shot. Because the image will be exactly on the shoe, so we're not too worried about it engraving past the shoe. It's only going to be lined up with the shoe exactly. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's head over. 
First thing we're going to do in Lightburn is select camera control. We're going to go up and select our Lightburn camera and update our overlay. And now we can see right into the laser, the lid has to be open. We're going to go ahead and select our image that we created <clears throat> with our design. And then because it's see-through, we can align it right to the shoe. And the great thing about the camera here is that you can zoom in so we can really see if we've got it in the right spot. I love this camera. It has been great so far. I've used it a few times and every time it's been perfect. We're going to change our settings. We're going to have our speed at 300, power at 30%. We're going to turn off our air assist and then image should be about 300 DPI somewhere in there. We're going to right click and adjust our image. We're going to change this to say basic, which is going to up the contrast, reduce the brightness and the gamma. And then we're going to hit start. Colt Seavers came out great. I'm super impressed. I think we uh, need some help on some parts, but otherwise, I have so many ideas of what we could do on shoes. I think we learned a lot through doing this test shoe. I'm glad we had the opportunity. I was super impressed with what we came up with with the first two tries. There's two tries here. This was the one side and the other side. So two runs. We feel like we've got it down in two runs. I mean, it looks good. It does. I'm super impressed. I'm going to give you guys a close up so you can really see it. But what we did learn, the rounded or the curved areas of the shoe, you just have to be very mindful of those and make sure that you're not trying to engrave on those curved surface areas because the engraving does get light. It so fades we, out, yeah. Yeah, so when we found with this shoe, we're gonna raise this heel up a little bit. Actually, did we decide we're just gonna do it in multiple parts? I think parts? we should do it multiple parts. For our, for our final shoe, well, the great thing about the final shoe is it doesn't have a heel, it just has a yeah. strap back here. That's... So I don't really have to worry about this part of it, but we do think we can lay this down and get a good engrave on like this surface area right here. And then we've decided we're gonna do each side. We're gonna do the toes separately. We're gonna do a little area right here. It probably won't go around these sides on. I think it'll look cool if it fades or fades into each other. I think it'll be okay. And then we haven't decided yet. We're gonna come back and let you know what we decide about the back of the heel. I cannot put the shoe in like, but I can do something like this on the F1. So we may end up just doing a little something cool on the back of the heel oh, with the we'll F1. Write, maybe we'll just put Richmond yes, down just the back the, of each yeah, heel. Yeah, just, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. something simple like that. And I think that would be, we don't have to worry about it wrapping around right, or right. anything. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gotten that far yet, but we've done the stunt shoe. What'd you call them? Colt, Colt Seavers. Seavers. <laughs> the stunt man. And now everybody cross your fingers. Everyone cross your fingers that we've got cross one em. shot that this is going to work out on the final shoe. The shoes came out amazing. They came out better than I thought they would. I mean, I, I might bid on these myself. Yeah, we're pretty impressed with ourselves. We did do this in three steps, each side, the top, the back, as you saw, and it's just, it's just awesome. I'm super impressed. Awesome. I think that this is gonna be a surprise entry uh, in a custom shoe. I don't think anyone is going to yeah, have anything like I this. I think people will be, uh, I don't know. I'd really like to see the other shoes because these shoes look good. I mean, <laughs> I am so surprised how good these came out. 
I, I have so many more ideas now. I want to do some of my own shoes now. Well, we have a second pair of stunt shoes that we didn't that we didn't end up using and we didn't need. Uh, but those are happen to be in my size, and they're an actual shoe that I would wear. What so a coincidence. I <laughs> that's why I kind of saved them <laughs> because I wanted to get it right. So if I didn't have to use them as a test shoe, I now want to be able to engrave those and have my own version of Richmond shoes. I think that would be so cool, I right? Think it would be cool. What a conversation starter. Big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. And we're about out of time. Kim has to go make her own shoes, and I have to get busy on next week's project. And we will see you on Tuesday for Test Cut Tuesday. Don't forget to join us at 4 p.m. Eastern for a new Test Cut. Little test paint and chat. Little test paint and chat.